good morning good afternoon good evening everyone i hope that all of you are doing well and i hope that all of you are doing super great first of all a very warm welcome from edureka thank you for joining us today's session guys my name is deepak and it's an immense pleasure to meet you so let's get started let's take a look at our agenda today today we will talk about is your lb what lb is which is as your load balancer then we will talk about why we should use a load balancer post that we will talk about azure load balancer types and after that we will talk about azure load balancer versus application gateway versus traffic manager so this is the agenda for today moving on talking about structured learning at agreka so if you are highly interested to take the course from us and uh, you want to know what all topics we cover you can find out a list of entire topics entire details on uh, on our website uh, which is atweka.co wherein you will be able to see the list of entire webinars the list that we are going to conduct in addition to that uh, if you want to see a quick overview about the topics that we are going to cover let me just uh, share my screen in the first class you are going to have um, the understanding about what is azure solution architect training what are different components different services with the practical hands on in the second class we will learn about azure virtual machines and networking with the practical hands on In the third class, we will learn about Azure VMSs, Virtual Machine Skill Set, Availability Zone with the Practical Hands-On. In the fourth class, we will learn about Azure App Services and its feature with the Practical Hands-On. In the fifth class, we will learn about Advanced Azure Hybrid Connectivity and Site Recovery with the Practical Hands-On. In the sixth class, we will learn about Azure Storage Solution and Design Patterns with the Practical Hands-On. In the seventh class, we will learn about Azure Kubernetes Service, Docker, how to integrate everything. Even in the storage solution, you are going to learn all the different four types of storages that we have: blob, file, queue, table, with the practical hands-on. In the eighth class, you will learn about Azure Active Directory and RBAC. RBAC is role-based access control. How you can basically do a real-time synchronization with your on-premise uh, Active Directory. Uh, what is Azure AD Sync? All such kind of things you are going to learn with the practical hands-on. in the ninth class you will learn about azure monitoring and insight services with the practical hands on and in the 10th class you will learn about dam which is there's your design as your migration uh, what are different tools different ways with the help of which you can migrate the data from azure on premise to the cloud or uh, how you can basically migrate the data from the cloud to on premise all such kind of things you are going to learn from us once you are going to enroll the course from our side where in all the information in detail is going to be appear to you your all the content particles uh, each and everything is going to be very well documented and you are going to have access of it from the day one now talking about what is alb what is is your load balancer before we talk about let's just understand what is azure azure basically is a cloud computing service given by microsoft now what is a cloud before we talk about cloud computing service let's take a step back and understand the cloud now in the earlier days if we have to send a data from one site to another let's say i am sending a data from one location to another how i will be able to send that data in order to send the data out i am going to use basically different ways in other words when i say, when i say different ways different ways as in i am going to be dependent on the physical media like uh, i will require any hard drive uh, floppy drive you know cd dvd drive i'm going to put my data over there and from that i'm going to transfer my data right that's the approach i think everyone will remember that's the approach that we use uh, always however isn't that like very uh, painful because every time i have to transfer a data via external devices it's going to take a lot of time and plus in this competitive world when we need everything quicker it's going to be painful in addition to that just think about it, any other organization who wants to send some data from one country to another and if they are going to take use of these external drives and all it can become a big nightmare for them because the moment that they are going to use all these external uh, devices and all it's going to take ages every company has to spend um, a couple of days in order to get a data for example there is some urgent data time sensitive data which i want to send to another party to other customer other client it's going to take ages right and uh, we can't wait like no company can wait for that long maybe there is some uh, customer information some supplier information we will not be able to send the data in a real time so in the case of cloud you get all such kind of benefits wherein you can transfer the data in the real time so azure basically gives you a flexibility that not azure even the cloud services solutions we have in the market they gives you flexibility that 
you can access your data in a real time and you can basically spin up the resources in real time. Now, if I want to create a virtual machine, you know how much time it takes? It takes longer time, like around approximately an hour if I had to build up any server in order to install it and perform all the kind of activities, it would take almost an hour, right? It, it's time consuming. But in the case of cloud, everything is quicker. You don't have to spend a couple of hours. You don't have to even spend, um, I would say, the days actually. The moment you need any kind of resource, just you have to request that resource and within two to three minutes maximum that resource is going to be created with a given configuration plus you can also do the auto scaling auto scaling basically means that you want to con configure something uh, you want to configure the scaling part like um, the resource should uh, be scale up automatically scale down automatically all such kind of condition all such kind of criteria you can define very easily without any kind of hassle so all such kind of benefits you basically get in the cloud now, why is Azure so famous? Like we have so many different cloud vendors in the market. We have the cloud from Google, which is known as GCP. We have a cloud from Amazon, which is known as AWS. We have even the cloud from um, Microsoft, which is Azure. Uh, we have cloud from IBM, which is acquired by software. But why exactly is Azure is famous? You know, if we have so many uh, cloud vendors in the market, the one of the biggest benefit in the case of uh, Azure is because if you see, uh, Microsoft has a huge market share. Like you talk about development tools like C Sharp and all. Um, you talk about other different types of tools that we have. Like for example, a database we have SQL, SQL Directory. These uh, all these things basically are the proprietary of Microsoft. It gives you a huge advantage that you can integrate with Microsoft solution very very easy, without any kind of hassle, without having any kind of trouble you can easily integrate with the other solutions uh, very easily. At the same time, you don't have to worry about uh, different uh, implementation, you know, complicated technologies, all such kind of benefits you get here. So you can integrate with different tools. At the same time, if you want to uh, use these different tools uh, in different, I would say, uh, for the use cases, you are going to have that advantage is that you can use these different tools for different purposes and uh, you can easily integrate those APIs, those tools, those solutions very easily with the help of Azure. At the same time, uh, now in so many companies, uh, specifically when they're in the business, they have a requirement that um, they have to purchase a license in bulk. Because if I'm a big company, I have 400,000 computers, all these companies basically, they will go to take a uh, Windows 10 license for every machine is going to be very expensive. So purchase a license in bulk, in certain cases, they do the partnership as well. So which eventually uh, gives them a huge advantage and they save the cost. Now, in addition to that, they are spinning up this solution wherein they are just going to live directly with Azure. Uh, they just have to add one more um, you know, component in the subscription, which is going to give an advantage to them that their entire solution is going to be very cheaper as compared to other cloud vendors. Now, due to all these reasons, due to all these things, Azure has gained so much visibility plus Azure has so much market share at the same time um, you can also perform so many unique things that is your provide that you cannot do with other cloud vendors also it uh, helps you to have using their services at the price of nuts plus you can like do perform auto scaling you can have a requirement you know if this kind of requirement is going to be there it should the resource should scale up automatically the resource should scale up automatically all this kind of requirement also you can configure in the case of azure is very easy without any kind of much hassle now talking about Azure Load Balancer. Before I talk about Azure Load Balancer, first of all, we need to understand what is Load Balancer. Load Balancer basically helps you to load balance your traffic. If I'm sending so many requests to any of a device, and uh, if all the re uh, requests that I'm going to send it to you, uh, you know, basically on the device, if it's going to hit the server, it's going to eventually bring a lot of load. Now, since, uh, you know, in this COVID pandemic, uh, we have seen that so many companies went to remote, right? So many companies are going remote, people are working remotely, at, uh, due to which so many hacks are being happening. Now, if my real IP address of my server, of my application is going to be revealed, then in that case, anyone over the internet can try to uh, send the malicious packets, malwares from my system, which eventually can bring my entire environment, which eventually can bring my entire even organization down so having said that you are going to get the huge advantage with the load balancer that in, uh, it will help you to uh, you know distribute the traffic at the same time in addition to that he uh, you are also going to have uh, one of the other benefit that your entire data is going to remain secure 
So all such kind of benefits uh, you are going to get with the help of load balancer. Now talking about Azure load balancer service. So Azure provides you load balancer as well that you can use which can cater to your needs. Now what is Azure load balancer? Your Azure load balancer is a layer 4 TCP UDP load balancer which provides high availability by distributing your incoming traffic among the least busy devices or the healthy virtual machines you have automatically. Now talking about why you should use the load balancer. The very first point is load balancer helps you to load balance your internal and external traffic to Azure virtual machine. Second is there are many variations of uh, you know load balancers. So uh, but in the case of uh, Azure load balancer it combines all the benefits at the same time it's as a service model. You don't have to purchase external devices like there are external load balancers available like F5 and all. So you don't have to make an investment. Uh, you are going to have this uh, load balancer as a service. When you want to use it, use it. If you don't want to use it, simply uh, delete it and you won't be charging, getting charged. The third is you can configure your outbound connectivity for Azure virtual machine. So from your, uh, if anyone is trying to get your application that you have hosted on the cloud, they are not going to get your actual IP address where you have hosted. They are going to have the IP address of your load balancer that you have. Next is you can load balance services on multiple ports, multiple IP address or both. If you can have the IP address, you can have the port. You are going to have both the flexibilities with you. So you can easily load balance, you know, multiple traffic coming from multiple devices. Now, next is uh, you can move internal and external load balancer resources across the Azure region. Now, if you want to have, if you have your on-premise load balancers, you can also easily use your on-premise load balancers as well without having any kind of testing. Next is you can load balance your TCP and UDP flow on all the ports simultaneously using HA ports. What is HA? HA basically is a cluster. Now, what is TCP? TCP is a reliable protocol uh, where you're going to get an acknowledgement if your packet has been received or not, and your uh, UDP is not a reliable protocol. So if your uh, packet has been received, packet has not been received, you are not going to get the acknowledgement back in either of the case when you're using UDP. However, in the case of TCP, you are going to get the acknowledgement back. Next is you should use health props to monitor load balance resources. The last one is you should enable support for load balancing of IP v6. So these are the various um, I would say reason that why you should use a load balancer clear. Yeah. I hope that uh, you got a clear understanding. What is the need of it? Moving on talking about load balancer type. What are different types of Azure load balancers? We have different types. We have Azure load balancer. We have a traffic manager. We have application gateway either of them. You can use it as per your requirement. Now Azure load balancer is basically an uh, internal component in your Azure wherein you can just simply build a load balancer out and you can use it as per your requirement. In the case of application gateway you can uh, basically deploy it and you can easily hook up with your multiple applications where multiple applications can have a single uh, application gateway. Traffic manager basically helps you when you want to go more in a round robin fashion it will help you because now if I talk about major differences your Azure load balancer basically is a network based load balancer which just work on layer 4 only only TCP and UDP. So recommended traffic on this is known HTTPS. At the same time uh, your endpoints in this case are your NICs which is your virtual machine or virtual machine skill set or IP address. But in the case of the second one which is your app gateway it's a web traffic load balancer which works on layer 7 where which can be used for your WAF web application firewall and it can be used for your HTTPS as well. The last one that we have is traffic manager. It basically DNS based uh, traffic load balancer which is also on uh, layer 7. However, uh, it does not have uh, any types but majorly we use on known HTTP S only. So these are different load balancers which are being available in the case of Azure. Let me just show you the small glimpse of it. So this is my Azure portal like if I want to use um, you know if I want to create the resources generally you are going to use um, the resource group and the resource group your entire uh, resources are going to be available like you want to create your own storage type you want to create the load balancer everything is going to be into a container that container is known as resource group now in this case if i, I will talk about the you know uh, basically the virtual network so i can have my own virtual network like for example if i want to use the load balancer the devices that i shared with you you know you can have this as your load balancer you want uh, you can have a traffic manager you can have the application gateway all the three different categories that I have uh, shown you depending on your requirement. You can pick up the one that you want and based on that you can do the respective action. Okay guys and we can wrap up the session for today.
so i hope that you have really enjoyed this session and you have learned a lot thank you so much for joining wishing all of you a great day ahead